hi everyone welcome to my channel again uh, here with another video on no code tools uh, just doing a part two to sign up with LinkedIn API using bubble.io thanks for everyone who has subscribed like the videos and have been sharing the videos really appreciate it if you are seeing this video and it's helpful please feel free to, to like and share the video and also subscribe now I've had a few comments asking how to populate the user data in Bubbles API. This is the data that is called from the link from LinkedIn's API. I've had another user ask the same thing: how to cache the fields appropriately on the Bubble forum. This person says, "Thanks for your video. It worked perfectly." But how can I retrieve or show the user's information? First name, last name, picture. So I'll take you through using my application fakecommuting.com. This is the back end of the application. Now I'm in the data section under data types. I have a user data type here and it has been populated with the following fields. First name, which is a text field. Last name, a text field. So the first name and last name are separate. Profile pic, you can name it whatever you like. It's an image field and user ID is a text field, right? Now, whenever the data is populated, whenever a user sign, signs up, you'll get all the information from, from, including the profile pic from LinkedIn whenever they sign in automatically and it will be stored in the database. So let's go back to data types. So you can see here clearly that email, modified date, created date and so on are built-in fields that's automatically done by Bubble. So let's navigate to the design section. So I'm in my header section. Let, let me show you the full page. This is how the page looks fully. Um, if you navigate to fakecommuting.com, you'll see what it looks like uh, outside of the Bubble editor, but the header this was generated automatically by, you know, Bubbles default template, and I just made some changes. So, um, if I go to Ed Element, there is a login with LinkedIn button that I created. Let's navigate to the workflow. So, when users click this button, there is something that is triggered in the workflow, and uh, I set up some conditions so when the button when that button that i navigated from is clicked and the current user isn't logged in an event happens so the the linkedin api is called to collect the user's information so sign up with linkedin with the api so here's how you get to that section go to account sign up with a social network you go to API LinkedIn login. This is what I named um, my API. So once you have that set, it will call the API and get the user's information, right? So that is, once the button is clicked, they will go through the sign up process. Alternatively, what I have done is when the button is clicked and the user is logged in already, it logs out the user. So let me show you how that condition will be made so the same button logs in the user and logs out the user at the same time so in the design section where i have the header i've set up a condition where when the user is logged in when current user is logged in the text changes from signing with linkedin to log out so they'll click the log out button and they'll be carried to the workflow where once the button is clicked and the current user is logged in it logs out the user and you know it reverts to signing with LinkedIn. So now you know how to set up your login logout button. Now let's look at the workflow when a user is logged in. So you can add a new event and click general user is logged in. When the user is logged in, we will make a, a call on the API. So we add an action, you navigate to plugins and you select login 
LinkedIn API call. That's what I called um, my API. So once that is selected, you'll be good to go. Now getting information from the database that we set up before, we had these fields, first name, last name, profile, pick, user ID. So you are getting the, for the first thing, you are getting the result. So once you click to add uh, a dynamic expression, you will get result of step one. That's the LinkedIn API call. And you will use the first name localized in the language that you want to build your website in or that you want the user to see their name in. Right now, this is from the LinkedIn uh, the LinkedIn API documentation. I was trying to find some information here for you. You'll have the localized name. Let me see if I can find a better uh, documentation for you guys. This looks like a better one. So, okay. So the localized first name is just a localized version of the first name field that is in the language that the user would have their name displayed. It will be called into um, the database as you call the workflow. So first name is localized in English, US English. I have chosen that last name as a result of step one, localized in English. Profile pick, it's the display picture, display image. And I have selected identifiers, apostrophe S, identifier colon, first item. Now what that speaks to is whenever a call is initialized, I would have the profile picture display image as a text. And this is a, this text um, speaks to a digital asset. However, what you'd want to have stored in the database is the profile picture display image elements list, right? From here, you will see that the API call calls the actual image element, right? So that's what we use to display in our database as we were showing you here. So as it pertains to the profile pic, it, it's a result of step one, the profile picture display image elements identifier. So it's, it, it evaluates to a list of API call identifiers. And then the first item, so it's two identifiers, identifier with an S, apostrophe S, identifier, colon, first item. So let me show you how I get that. Let me display, so as a result of step one, the profile picture display element, and then I'm doing an identifier with an S. Let's look for that. And then I do another identifier, and then I do the first item. And the user ID is just a result of step one, uh, the LinkedIn API calls ID. Right? I think that is straightforward enough. So that's how you get the fields and the API call linked together. Now let's go back on the front page. So as you can see, I display the profile. So I wanted to address another concern. Some users have been having errors like API connector error. The OAuth 2 API, LinkedIn API is not configured properly and they are receiving errors whenever they try to initialize the call. Now, I don't have that error displayed here, but I had it before and I think it is time related because each time I log in, sometimes the error is there, but I'm still able to log in and log out users. Now, all that is necessary to be done is to go into the preview section, you navigate to preview, 
and then you go ahead and log in now i am already logged in you go ahead and log in in preview you could use your own account and once that is done you will get a notification that you have successfully initialized the call and i'll display the image here this is the notification i should put it up above that's the notification that you will get all right now let's go back on the front page so as you can see i display the profile picture as a circular uh, display image it's an image element dynamic image is the current user's profile pic and i have the roundness set to 30 right also on the my photos page i have uh, the user's image here as well current user's profile pic with a roundness of 30 as well slightly larger than what is displayed in the header section and I have the current user's first name and the current user's last name displayed. Now, you can see that I'm using current user's first name, current user's last name, and current user's profile pic as fields from the database. And we have stored the information from the API calls there. So it should display. So let's check fake commuting.com. As you can see my image, my LinkedIn image is displayed here. When I navigate to my photos, I have my profile pic here uh, and my first name and last name displayed below. Just to mirror this in the editor, this is exactly how it looks. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope I answered all the questions pertaining to displaying uh, the fields from the database also storing the information from the API in the database and handling the API errors uh, please feel free to like this video share subscribe uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn at Stepo Campbell underscore I am available for consultations you can send an email to contact at nocodemakers.com that's contact at nocodemakers.com so thanks for watching have a good one